Hi there and welcome to Bustanet. My name is Daljit. Welcome to the channel. We are here because you are asking questions. You're asking questions about the game. I started a trend the SI forums where I'm known as Rashidi, in case you guys are wondering. Uh, that handle um, is um, based on a player, a specific, I mean, I named it after a legendary African player called Reg Rashidi Yakini back in the day. That's many, 20 years ago. I don't think most of you know who he is. But yeah, that, that my name, my handle comes from the, his name. And um, so what we are doing here today is um, answering some of the questions you guys are asking. And to be honest with you, I wanted to get this done as quickly as I could because um, I don't normally have time nowadays to write long essays on the forums to explain certain things. And I was hoping that I can use this as an opportunity to answer some of your questions. And if you have more questions to ask, well, you know, it's pretty easy. Just hop on down to the forums. We've got a thread there which... You know, it's a really simple thread. I could say, ask me a question. You go into this thread and you can ask me all the questions you want. And yes, we shall avoid, please avoid asking me how to, you know, if you downloaded this tactic from somebody and you want my help to make it play better or you want my help with player recommendations, or please, then I wouldn't be covering those kind of questions. If you have questions um, it, based on tactics you might have downloaded from somebody else, then I would recommend going to the creator of that tactic to ask him because I don't want to second guess why he chose a specific role or PI and what kind of player he had in mind. So you better off asking them directly instead of asking me. So here we go. First question that we have today comes from Dave B653. What is your favorite role in the game? And how long do you give uh, tactic time before you start tweaking it, adjusting it? Well, that's a pretty interesting question what's my favorite role seriously <laughs> you guys are asking me that question i got so many favorite roles this is so bad man okay if you're gonna limit me to one and this is gonna come as a shock it's the target man i'm serious i joke you not it's the target man. i know some of you are laughing going, what the hell is it should be a mazala what happened to the inverted wing back what happened to the ball playing defender no, it's the, it is definitely the target man on support. Why? Because the target man is the only role in the game that can be first up. I love I love the role because you can use it at any level of football. Two, I don't get I don't get um you know I don't get penalized with current ability. Three, it's a role that allows me to do quick transitions from back to front or anywhere on the pitch on any mentality, which is even brilliant because there's a myth flying around that fast transitions from back to front are AI generated only. No, no, no. They all depend on your roles, duties, mentality. So if you got all three lined up very nicely, you can do some very quick transitions all the time. And um, I love the target man because it gives him those kind of options. Players can cross to the target man. Ball playing defenders can play the ball up and sometimes they'll go for the target man. Playmakers look for the target man. So it's a great, great, great option, especially in uh, systems like the 4-4-2. I love those systems playing with the four, uh, target man. So lovely to play with the target man, honestly. And um, if how long do I give a tactic time before um, I give up on it? <laughs> Usually, um, I'll tell you this much, right? Learn how to... Okay, there are two ways to look at this. Pre-season and regular season. In pre-season, you should be able to understand whether the tactic is enough, good enough. Really, that's all you need. Because if you can see your players bring the ball from back to front and, you know... Get, create a goal scoring opportunity that should be enough then you look at stats in the game to tell you what kind of chances you created whether you've got very good chances inside the box don't please don't go to total shot count and just because you got 45 shots on goal just immediately come to the conclusion it's a great tactic no you want good shots on goal not 33 shots on goal you know how many shots I am happy with when I say a tactic is good enough 2-3 to three. really good shots on goal they don't come from set pieces, corners, um, dead ball situations. They come from open play. So, yeah. So, you, you have to make an assessment and you can do that in preseason. In regular season, that's when you look at statistics, right? You look at your style of play, whether you're controlling the ball. Is, does it achieve all the things that you want it to achieve? And you should be able to tell within one or two games whether it's working for you. Because, to be honest with you, tactics, none of that... I don't put a lot of importance to tactics in the game as much as I do to choosing the right player for the position. That is more important in the game. 
choosing the right combination of players on the pitch and understanding how their traits you know affect the tactic how their traits affect the role understanding whether that player is going to come back and help you defend no, I play a 4-1-4-1 uh, I, I did it on Twitch right so I stream on Twitch as well so if you guys have any questions you can always pop in on Twitch and I do it three times a week and if you saw me on Twitch you saw how I went to Anfield with AC Milan and I think it was the second season or third season I had Harlan in the team and everybody was asking me why are you playing Harlan on the flanks and I went like I want to win this game I want Harlan on the flanks and nobody believed me but I said I have only one Reason, I have only one duty for Haaland this entire game. He is going to play Andy Robertson out of the game. And the other fo- the other wing I had was to uh, was set to play Trent Alexander Arnold out of the game. So throughout the entire, f- we conceded two goals early, and then after that, when I made the tweaks to my system, we completely shut the two fullbacks out of the game, and we went on to win the game three two. Here though. It wasn't a question of my tactic changing. It was me understanding what I can do with my players. So what I did in that game was I got Haaland to track back and follow Andy Robertson everywhere he went. So it might have killed a bit of the attacking um, output from Haaland, but it set, it, it destroyed Liverpool's attacking output. So Liverpool couldn't attack me anymore. And we went on to win the game. I repeated the same thing two seasons ago. I kept doing it the same way. So here, it's not really your tactic. It's understanding how your tactic is playing. That's really important. That's true. But you should be able to see it in flow against most teams. But once you meet better teams, then it's a question of how you can understand team instructions to actually extract maximum value from your tactic. How do you shut the game down? How do you make sure your players keep the ball with the same tactic? Right? It's possible. So go out there, master one tactic first. That's my best advice. And you're right, a DM is going to keep your systems more solid. But you shouldn't have to spend six games, seven games for your team to come good with a tactic. I know there's such a thing called tactical familiarity, but the penalty isn't that high. It's not, some people seem to think that yeah, it'll take me three months before my, my players will start giving me results because of tactical familiarity. And that's not true. The game doesn't penalize you that heavily. You know, you should be able to tell by looking at the game itself whether your team can play with the tactic. And that should be take you just one game. So if uh, if you're having problems with that, then j- trust me, it's more to do with how you see roles and duties fitting in your tactic, whether you've chosen the right players for the roles and duties and whether you're expecting them to move in a certain way. And my advice is, Start with a system that you know. I see you mentioned a 442. 442 is actually a very, very good um, tactic to actually master. Once you master the 442, chances are you'll be able to master all tactics because the 442 is a pretty, pretty solid system and you understand space a lot more effectively with the 442. On the next question, let's see if a generation youngster coming through your academy. Club philosophy, auto football, what do you train? Tactical, mental, or physicals first? Now, when it comes to trades, Physical attributes are the first to develop. They, 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 they develop really quickly for youngsters. Mental attributes and mental attributes are the last probably to go in a player. Technical attributes maybe, but the first to go are uh, first to go up and the first to come down are physical attributes, right? So you, you might get a, a big spike in physical development when they're young and then by the time they're 28, 29, you start seeing some declines in physical attributes. But you see mental attributes maybe still growing and technical attributes still growing. And these two, they won't show declines until much later. In fact, I've had a player who's 34, I have a player who's 34 years old who's got, uh, still has the mental acuity for the position. Uh, his physical attributes have degraded. So if, you, if you're talking about the way attributes line up, then physical are the ones to go up first. Mental, mentals, you, you want to train mentals when they're young because whatever it is, physical attributes will always improve. So you want to do this uh, total football, my recommendation is focus on mental attributes because these are very, very important in the game. Uh, next question we have from Wixie. Thanks for sending these questions, by the way. What do you think is the biggest misconception people have regards to the tactical creator? I think understanding of mentality is probably a big one. And of course, the well, to be honest with you, I totally agree with you. I think mentality is the biggest misconception. I've, I've been saying it since day one. I think we need to rename mentality and just remove the word defensive and attacking from mentality and just call it risk. Like, just have a risk board there, you know, like, or color code the thing. I, I, I did it with a custom skin two years back. I renamed everything and color coded everything so people will understand it better. And then when people stop thinking, looking at the word man, defensive, they all started playing better. So the biggest 
misconception is mentality in that I totally agree with you our next question from next PR, the next QPR manager I've been promoted with Bolton while two players from League 1 to the Premiership I've signed many players or recommendations I have two nap tactics oh we'll stop there if you're using somebody else's downloaded tactic please go and ask the creator of that tactic for help because uh, I nah I don't know what he, I, I mean, he, had, he may have had all his PIs in there and his specific players with a role, so you should go and talk to him. What's your thoughts on having a tactic with DLP, Defend and AP Support Attack? Okay, seriously, this is a very interesting question. I assume you're playing a 4 2 3 one Now, in this case, there's nothing wrong with those two. It's just understanding what those roles and duties do on your in your tactic because if you play with an AP on attack then that that flank is going to be vulnerable so who's help who's going to help you defend what are the rules and duties that are around him so whenever you create tactics you got to think about all the rules and duties around that player or that combination that you have it's a it's a not a bad combination i've used the attacking cent attacking playmaker in the middle with the deep line playmaker before i've even got tactics where i've got three playmakers in there intentionally if you look at the tiki taka system in the presets one of them has got three playmakers in it Nobody seems to say it's a bad tactic. I think it's a brilliant tactic. But here again, um, you have to consider what will happen when the attacking playmaker bombs forward. Who's going to help you defend? What are you doing with that space? Who's helping you um, build play out from the goalkeeper? Who's helping you build play out from the keeper out? You know, are you playing play out of defense? These are the questions you ask yourself. There's nothing wrong with a combination, that, that combination. It's how do you get support for that combination and how do you make them defend that flank where the playmaker is operating that's the only thing you gotta ask yourself no, nothing wrong with that just uh, it's a bit it's challenging i'll, I'll probably have to use a in if it was me i probably have a wing uh, inverted wing back there or maybe a wing back on defend or even a full back on defend with an overlap and then i would have a winger or an inverter winger on the left flank on support and maybe an AP and AM uh, in the, the AMC slot on support as well. So I'll, I'll surround the attacking playmaker in the middle with a lot of support duties. So there will be a lot of players around him who are going to help him defend that area. I've been, Cardoni, I've been told that the AI can't learn but I'm curious about this. What does the AI uh, with the tools that the AI has you are assuming that he can um under so what can the ai do right so does the ai actually adapt does the ai actually learn from your tactics so that's basically your question all right cardoni very simply put the ai has got some ai managers have got tactical knowledge AI, ai managers have uh depending on their attributes they can be versatile with their tactics and some of them might have a few tactics under their belt and they may be able to use players in different positions and different roles and some of the ai managers could be a bit more rigid ai managers always have a game plan they go into a game and they will look at the situation and then make assessments based on that and they will um, ad um they will adapt to the situation in the game not to your tactic right so if they're one goal down they might change when going on attacking duty. Uh, after 45 minutes, after 30 minutes, they haven't scored a goal, they expect to beat you, they will change something about their tactic. They might switch players around. So, it all depends on the attributes of that particular AI manager. But does it adapt based on your tactic? That means you are playing overlaps. It knows you're playing overlaps, so it will attack you down the flanks. Now, I have asked that to be included in the game many, many times. Many, many times. Since the day we had AD, we had that kind of an AI manager, I've been asking for an AI that would play chess with me on the pitch. If I decided to go down the left flank and attack it on the left flank, then I wanted it to counter me down my, you know, counter me down that same flank. So that means if I'm putting all my eggs in one basket and I'm going like with attacking wingers and I've got my fullbacks overlapping and I'm leaving lots of space i wanted the ai to pass into space and hit early balls yeah but the problem is when we reach we give the ai that kind of complexity what's going to happen is this none of us are going to win <laughs> and we're all going to there are going to be people screaming that the match engine is broken and as yes, i do not want to make the game that difficult 
So I would, no, the AI doesn't adapt that way. It just um, adapts to the scoreline or any other in-game events that have, might, might have happened. So no, Kadoni does not do that. Anyways, to stop conceding a ridiculous amount of set piece goals, I've conceded 44% of my goals from set pieces. I've tried set piece training routines and it's destroying my immersion in the game I love. Praveza, can I show you my game? Oh my goodness. Well, um, I didn't concede one single goal from a corner the whole of last season. Right? I rarely concede goals. When I set my tactics up, I rarely concede goals from set pieces. Now, I know there are a lot... The problem in this game is actually not conceding... It's not the conceding goals bit. For me, the problem in the, the game is actually attacking set pieces, right? So, attack... It's easy to score from attacking set pieces. It's very easy to defend from defensive set pieces. It's the problem is attacking set pieces. Now, um, why do I say that? Like... You, you won't find that the AI is always marking or setting up its set pieces uh, consistently, right? So some matches, it will not be defending a far post. Some matches, it will not be defending the near post. Some matches, it will be playing differently. So there are things that you can do in the game to make yourself stronger from set pieces. And it is about choosing the right players to mark the right positions. Now, um, I, for example, don't have anybody marking posts. I don't, I don't understand why people are doing that in... The year 2020. Nobody does it anymore. I mean, you don't need to play put players on post anymore. People have them. So if you're using the default set pieces, you gotta change them. Um, and the other thing is this: a lot of people they seem that they seem to think they're marking the far post when in reality they aren't really marking the far post, they're marking in the inside of the far post, not the outside of the far post. Um, the other thing uh, as well is um, the white free kicks, right? The white free kicks are a bit of an issue, right? That, that one that one I do admit, right? So I normally have uh, to put somebody on the far, marking the far post as well because if the white free kicks, they can be delivered in such a way that um, if um, they will come, there'll be a player coming on the on the far side unmarked. So you have to have somebody marking the far post area. Then you've got um, the... Deep, deep free kicks are another one you have to have somebody marking the far post and then when it comes to your set pieces right, who do you who do you place on the pitch there's a logic in who you position when you're defending your set pieces there's a the best jumper at near best jumper at far right you gotta have two at least two players at the edge of the area with very good anticipation they have to be able to shut down the long shot so there are I've done set piece guides as well so you should you should Take a look at some of them, but it is very possible to defend from set pieces. I mean, I went an entire season without conceding one from a corner, and the AI also went an entire season without conceding one from a corner, which is kind of which is which was kind of cool. Yeah. Matt, when I play a four two three one, use the AMC. He rarely gets involved, but playing deeper in the same role, a four three three seems him having a big influence in the game. If you give him gets deeper to come the ball, it might help. The issue with the AM position is a lot of modern formations play with a DM. And a lot of systems play with double DMs. So when they have a DM or a double DM, the AM is not going to find space. So you want to have an AM that's got very good off the ball. You also would help that he has comes deep to get the ball. He might drag somebody along with him and have him try killer balls. So imagine this, right? Your DM now, your AM drops deep, comes deep to get the ball, picks up the ball, right and looks for long range passes or killer balls so he picks a ball up and you have players attacking because the dm the am might pull somebody with him right and then after you play the diagonals from um from the center of the park so that could be an option and i would i would look at that as well the general consensus is you know four two three one you either have that as a option for your am or you play with a shadow striker right you don't play, nobody i mean i would never play an apm or an attacking playmaker in a 4 2 3 1 right in the middle. Because it will mean that against all these systems that have a DM, my attacking playmaker is gonna always have somebody, you know, somebody giving him putting him under some pressure. So yeah, definitely it comes to you, but get the ball is a very good option for your player. What is the tactic you used you enjoyed the most? FM version team, wow. Holy guacamole, that's a lot of tactics you're asking me for. King Jericho, that's really a trick question, man. What am I supposed to ask? How, if I give you, I've been playing this game since 1990, right? So, there'll be a lot of tactics. 
a lot. Scramjet? Anybody remember Scramjet? Yeah, one. It's the best tactic I have ever created, which which scored 85 goals in one, uh, I think one of my strike one of my strikers scored something like what? I am at obscene and normal. Uh, you guys still remember it. Yeah. It, 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 just that was basically the craziest tactic I ever made. Okay, so um that was a three for three four three diamond. Uh, it was a three four three diamond. Now for FM nineteen and FM twenty, I think my the best the formations I enjoyed the most was Galileo, my two three five. Who doesn't love five strikers on the pitch? I do. I love five strikers. So I have five strikers on the pitch. Yeah. And then we had Dark Side, which had who doesn't like the Brazilians? I mean seriously, you don't like Samba football? Then something's wrong seriously wrong with you, man. Okay, four to do the double DM. I had my I had my samba football going all the way. So that was a lot of fun. And then uh we have uh the four one four, which is okay, you know, it's a bit boring, I know. The four one four ones can be very boring because why well, they don't concede a lot of goals, but they are very stable tactics. Um so yeah, I got my Red Faro system from FM nineteen, which still works in FM twenty, and my four three one twos, which still work, and I love all these tactics. Uh they, they, I'm not there are some issues with this game. There are definitely issues with this game. I find that we need to improve the game. The game has to make big strides in the next uh, edition, right? Yeah. There are some still some match engine bugs. There are still some uh, glitches with the um, some of the uh, some transfer dealings. But uh, quite a number of these, I can I don't see them. Meaning I don't I don't use them, and the AI doesn't use them, and I'm happy with it. So. Yeah, but those are my favorite tactics. Is there anything that you can do tactically to avoid so many offsides? First up, I'm going to complain something. I, I, one thing I absolutely hate about the game. There's way too many offside highlights. If you guys are watching this from SI, can we cut down on the number of offside highlights? Wait, that's just way too many. I hate it. I mean, show me the events that lead up to a free kick. I, I value that more than a blooming offside. But, okay, speaking of offsides, yes, you can avoid offsides. Please find players who have got good anticipation, concentration, then you'll be fine. So generally, it's the quality of the players that you're using on the pitch, right? Sometimes you play with players with poor concentration and anticipation or get caught, caught offside. Um, and, um, yeah... And other teams are going to try and catch you offside. So it's a question of uh, whether your boys can anticipate the offside trap and are paying attention to the events unfolding on the pitch. You can't avoid it if the, your players are just bad at it. <laughs> so the player choice is more important here than anything else. In your opinion, what's the most underrated position and role when it comes to creating tactics and why? Aha, the most underrated role is the target man. It is the one that most underrated goal. I rarely see people using the target man. The target man is easily the most versatile. It's like the piece in the puzzle, right? That gives you the most options in the tactic. But a lot of people don't seem to see that. I, I love the target man. I think it is the most underrated role because you can have really fast transitions on any mentality with a target man. See this. Put a pressing forward up there and tell me you can get the same thing. No way. But with a target man, you can you know, target man, I, I can, I can, and I have options, right? If I have a target man, and then if I wanted to, uh, I want to like um, wind down the clock, so to speak, right? I can, I can take one of my defenders, just stick him up on the pitch, turn him into a target man, and play the balls to him. He holds out the balls, we play for set pieces. I can, I can have a very quick, I can do a clock start, like Liverpool start out the gates, you know, first 10 minutes, play direct tempo. Direct passing, pass into space, hit early cross, put our target man right in front, off another one in a 4-4-2, get the early goal, shut up shop, play the target man, play long balls to him and he holds out the ball, he play for set pieces. See, that's the thing about target mans in the game. Target mans are so good. It's so fun to use the target man because the transitions that you can generate with him are, are so cool. And I think the, there was a time when I never used a target man. I mean, that was 17 or 16 because I just didn't I just didn't get the kick out of it but now man man the kick is so good the kick is so good with the target man uh, Denen123 is using a central he's using a central midfielder on defense above a libero wrong 
That's a good question. I won't say there's any wrong or right, but you have to understand what it does to your tactic, right? There's no such thing as a wrong or right. Now, somebody comes out, it's just wrong to do this. No, I mean, like, there are certain things that are just wrong. Like inverted wing back without any wingers, that's just wrong, right? Okay. Or inverted wing back with uh, two DMs, eh, just wrong. Okay, that one, that one I can understand why. But with uh, Libero and Defend Duty, no, not necessarily. I mean, like, okay, it's like, okay, first up, there's a reason why some people might suggest it's not ideal. Why? Because the DM holds his position, Libero is trying to break through. This guy is not moving. <laughs> He's there. Libero goes, hey, guy, can you do me a favor? Can you move out of the way, please? <laughs> I want to I wanna bring the ball forward, man. What are you doing in front of me? See? That could be the reason why. So if you want to use a libero, try not to use a CM on defense. If you want to, then you have to understand what that role does. Then the libero cannot be on attack. He's got to be on support. So he's got some protection in front of him. The central the central midfielder on defense is going to try and win the ball for him and then play back to the libero. You see, in certain cases, it might not be such a bad thing because the, the central midfielder on defense is protecting the libero. Right. Sometimes I use a halfback or a defend duty and I put a libero behind him. Right. Why? Because I want the libero to be protected. So this role in front of the libero is actually playing the passes back to the libero and the libero from a really deep position is doing diagonals. Deep diagonals from the back. Very nice to see. So you got to understand the dynamic before saying it's a wrong thing. I mean, some people might say wrong because they, they think it's doing this, right? So it's just, some, it's just being blocked. But in reality... This guy could be protecting the libero and allowing the libero to be more effective. So it depends on how you're going to use the tactic. How are you going to play that libero out? Like, for example, I don't like to play a libero on a deep line playmaker in front. Uh, it just doesn't make sense. Why have I got two playmakers back to back? The libero is just going to have a bad game. But you want to have somebody who's not as um, playmaking. That's such a word for it. Okay. In front of the libero. So that, man, well, that's a good question, man. Yonko, I'm still a bit unclear. Be more expressive. Which players does it affect exactly? Are there specific positions or, or role affected? Some more or less. It allows for more freedom of movement with the ball, correct? Um, okay. The TI be more expressive is creative freedom one, right? So it, it it's basically like this, okay? Okay. Um, be more expressive is like when you have a bunch of players who might be limited in their decision making and you're trying to ex get them to express themselves more, you're telling them to think outside the box. Right? So you're trying them, so you're telling them to do something more. Now imagine you have a very, very good team with a lot of decision, very a lot of players who could make good decisions, a lot of players with good vision and flair. And now you tell the team to be more expressive. Yeah, it's only one slight problem with the latter example is because sometimes you, you, you they don't know what to do. They got so many options. It's like you know, I'm Lionel Messi. I got option A to option Z. Now, which one do I take? So sometimes it's better to tell a good side to be more disciplined. Meaning, we want you to work the ball and get it out. And then sometimes you want there's no it's no far, hard and fast rule. It's important to understand what be more expressive means. Be more expressive tells the team to exercise their creative freedom a bit more. To think outside the box, to try more things on the pitch. Now, what does it affect? Exactly, I can't tell you that. It will affect a lot of things because the creative freedom influences decision making. So it can influence the way they pass the ball, the way they move. So these are the things that is going to be affected. Right? So these are the two main things I'm, I'm more interested in. Pass the ball and the way they move. So if you are going to use be more expressive as a TI, ask yourself a question. Do you have players on the pitch who can take advantage of this? Like, for example, be more expressive as a shot is probably not going to affect the central midfielder on defense. It's going to affect the the roles that are a bit more uh, have a bit more creative freedom juice going into them, like the inverted winger, the deep line playmaker, the the more creative roles, the 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 roles like uh, box to box midfielder, the regista, the playmakers, the inside forwards. Inside forwards don't really have create a lot of creative creative freedom. Sorry, the complete forward. Yes, these are the the roles on the pitch that have a bit more in them. So these players might try something a bit more. And it could help teams. I sometimes like to use be more expressive as an instruction for weak teams. I mean, 
none of these ex none of these opinions of mine are SI's opinions, right? So let me let's clarify this. These are my opinions, right? So I do some crazy things in my game. So this is not SI talking, this is me talking. So yes, off the ball movement and how to use the ball. Well, guys, that rounds up the very first edition of Ask Me a Question. I'm trying my best to answer some of your questions, and I hope, I really hope that I answer most of your questions. And if I haven't answered your questions clearly enough, then please let me know on the forums. Now, once again, the answers that I give you are my personal answers, right? Uh, these are not the answers from SI. These are not the answers from any official person who's on the development team or anything like that. These are my own answers and these are my own opinions. And of course, feel free to disagree with me. If you think I'm... If you think what I say doesn't make sense, then please ask me to explain it and I'll try and help you out a bit more. But I want to thank everybody for sending me your questions. And once again, I want to thank everybody for the support they've shown the channel. And if you have any questions, you guys know where to find me on Twitch at BusterNet or Addicted2FM.com. Now, don't forget, I stream on Twitch three times a week. And if you have more questions or if you want to bring your tactics in for a look, now I do stream on Twitch and sometimes I'll take your tactics and I'll try them out even and uh, we do different things as well. So, like I said before, a lot of you guys are making very good tactics. I actually have a little competition sometimes on my channel where I, you guys bring your tactics and I give it to an AI manager. I give it to the manager and let the manager use the tactic in an entire season. Now, so far, you guys have won the Champions League twice with your tactics without me doing anything. And one time, your, one of your tactics actually beat me in the Champions League as well. So... Is there anything wrong with the way you guys are making your tactics? I don't think so. So if you've got the basics, right, and the fundamentals, right, you guys are doing a, already doing a good job. So all you got to do is tweak the small little areas that you're missing out on. Well, if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. You guys take care. Have a good one. I'll see you again soon. But with this team, they are reasonably good. We've got to distribute the fullbacks. I want to see how this team does with this instruction. Because player our defense has got so many permutations right now. So would you recommend? No, I wouldn't even recommend. If you want to learn the game, don't play with a mid-table team. Don't. Okay, I would recommend taking a good side. The reason why I recommend taking a good side, right? Is because you want to rule out attributes as the reason why you screwed up.